Rachel, welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to share with you my favorite houseplants. I have been collecting houseplants for quite a while. One of my favorite houseplants actually is my oldest houseplant. He is, well, he's the only one I think that has a gender basically. I call him a he every time. <laughs> I call him my old man plant or my old man cactus. He's not an old man cactus. I'm not entirely sure what kind of cactus he is. I'm not good at knowing cactus names for some weird reason that always escapes me like other than my moon cactus but I think that's because I like the name <laughs> it's not in my list but my oldest plant is and I think I will start there all right he's kind of weird looking but it's not his fault he lived in a margarita glass for many years I got him when I was like 15 I don't know he's like 10 years old something like that since I've had him anyways and he puts off babies all the time he's a little weird shaped because you know he was living in a margarita glass and living against a window his whole entire life he's still living against a window because he has to be propped up he looks kind of like he might be having some rotting but he's not he just he's just a little wrinkly old man so it's not his fault but he's wonderful and he just does such a good job growing <laughs> all the time. He's huge. He's pretty awesome. And I love him a lot. He's very special to me. <laughs> Keeping with the cactuses, I have one more cactus. Yeah, I'm just jumping right into this video today. That's awesome. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of cactus this is. It has flowers that bloom for me at least twice a year, usually like three or four times a year. It's amazing. It started out much smaller than this, but I water my cactuses a little bit more frequently than you need to. I water them once the soil is completely dry, but like, you know, I wait to water them then, but I don't let them go too much longer than that. And that makes it to where my cactuses actually grow faster. Cactuses that I have and I don't do that, they don't grow as fast. So, you know, it's just, something that I've done and seems to work for me. I do live in a very dry climate, so that might kind of contribute to my success with that. I don't know. So anyways, this is one of my favorites. I don't know what it's called. The rest of these, I do know the names, don't worry. <laughs> it's just my cactuses, <laughs> poor things. But this one does have hooks. Um, I do have this one still. I had another one that had hooks, but it kept stealing everything. It was a little kleptomaniac, I swear. It just kept taking everything. Anything that got relatively close to it, it just snatched inside of it and it wouldn't let it go. It was a little hoarder too. A kleptomaniac hoarder. <laughs> so, anyways, I got rid of that one because it also wouldn't let go of my finger if my finger got too close to it. So. This one, on the other hand, is much nicer. But we will keep along in with the succulents. I will have more succulents later, like type of plants, that will be in my honorable mentions. Because um, I'm just going to show you my favorites, and then there's a few that I really like, but aren't my complete favorites. I don't know. They just aren't. Either because I don't have as much experience with them, or because I love them most of the time, but then sometimes I'm a little iffy on them, so, you know. Well, I mean, I love all my plants. Well, if I don't love them, then I get rid of them or I just kill them, basically. So, anyways. One more thing about those cactuses is that I keep them in a southern window. Keeping with the succulent type of plants, I have this aloe, it's like an aloe hybrid sort of a plant. I. Oh, so I guess this is another one that I don't completely know the name. I figured it out a while ago, and now I can't remember what it is. But I really like it a lot because it blooms for me all the time. It just finished blooming, and I haven't cut off this bloom stalk because it just finished blooming. But it grows like crazy, and it's always blooming, and then during the winter, when it gets a little cold next to the window, it will stress, well, basically. <laughs> and it will turn red-ish. And I love plants that will do that because it creates more 
colors throughout the year because some of my succulents I purposely try to stress them depending on what variety they are to color them up and it just makes things look beautiful. <laughs> Actually professional plant growers will do that as well because it just creates more of a show like with your sticks on fire or different kinds of sedums. Some of them not so much, other ones totally. Whereas this aloe, it just looks so beautiful when it gets cold. So I have a few of these actually. I got one plant and it pups all the time and I've separated them and then those ones now they're just huge. And I like the way it grows because it grows stacked. It's very interesting, more like a sedum than a regular aloe to some degree. Anyways, I like this aloe a whole lot. I've had this one for three years now, I believe. The other succulent type plants that I just love are, of course, a Sansevieria or a snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue. This one lives back here and it's beautiful. My mom, though, has hers in a northeastern corner where there is, like, it's in the corner and then there's a north window and an eastern window. I have a tour with her plants actually that you can see that huge sense of area. It's beautiful. It pretty much touches the ceiling. It's on a table, but so I don't know. Is it like five feet tall? <laughs> Something crazy like that. It's huge. And it flowers every spring for her. I believe because her room in her living room gets a little cooler in the winter and being by those windows, once it gets warmer in the spring, it pushes it to bloom. So anyways, this one is one of mine. This is the biggest one. Actually, my mom bought this for me when I moved into this house. So anyways, he's beautiful and gorgeous and has actually grown quite a lot since I've gotten it. Then I have this Dracenia back here. This is actually my dark abyss of my living room because it doesn't, I, there is lots of light right now, but this gets the least amount of light. But this Dracenia just brings so much color to this area. It's such a light, soft, sagey sort of a green. So it brings in that blue tint and it's great. I love it. And then also I hardly have to water it, which is good because this corner, I don't have to remember to water it. I keep this chair here so I don't have to go over the chair every week to water these. And I love it. This plant, I'm now getting into the ferns, but this plant is a little bit succulent. This is called an Austral Gem Fern. Oh, you're coming back? Hey, sweet boy. And I love it because, I mean, for one thing, it's beautiful and the way it just curls and has very interesting shape and texture. It's also a semi-succulent type of a fern where I... Thanks for bumping the camera, kitty. So it's a semi-succulent type of a fern where I don't have to water all the time and I do not have to need to worry about the humidity. I do keep some moss on it, but it doesn't need it. I just have the moss on there to, to make it look pretty. Basically, a lot of my plants, I'll have moss top dressing on it simply to make them look a little nicer, but some of them, it definitely actually helps them to do better, such as like my Boston ferns. But this one though is just, Oh, I love this Austral Gem Fern. I just really like this one because it's so easy to take care of. Plus, it's beautiful. And I really like ferns a lot just because I just love them. Here's my Asparagus Plumosa. I adore this plant. It is so easy for me to take care of. I've heard that some other people have a harder time with it, but for me, it is one of the easiest plants. And it has such a soft, like beautiful texture and I love to just go by it and pull on the leaves a little bit. It's so beautiful and it can be kind of thick. The only thing is that, oh, I'm pulling out all my moss. <laughs> this plant does not need the moss on it. I've had this plant for probably like two years now. Yeah, about two years. I've never had moss on it. I just recently put moss on it just to make it look a little more interesting, but the browning on the leaves, like the under leaves that from the older growth, that can be a little annoying and it can get little needles everywhere. They're not like sharp needles, it's just like the little tiny 
leaves that they're kind of needle-like. They're just very, very soft. It's been in the same pot ever since I got it and I've checked on it and I check on it every like six months-ish and it's never needed to be repotted yet and it just keeps growing and growing. It's huge. It's grown so much since I've gotten it. I love this plant a lot. It's definitely one of my top favorites for sure. Another plant that I've had for a very long time is this angel wing begonia. I have another one that I really like as well. I love angel wing begonias. I don't like other begonias very much. They're much more difficult to take care of, but these ones, they just have beautiful leaves underneath. They're very easy to propagate. If I let it wilt down and I forget to water it and it completely droops down, I give it some water and it's happy right away again. If it has too low of light, it doesn't like it too much, but it can do okay in lower light conditions, but it prefers brighter light. Um, it can bleach if it's in a direct window, but it's just really easy to take care of and so easy to propagate and make more and it's always growing and it's just gorgeous. Here is a plant that I have actually not had for a long time. It's only been about a year and I thought I had killed it but then I found out that it's a bulb plant and it goes completely dormant for like most of the year. <laughs> it seems like it's dormant for at least six months of the year, maybe even a little bit longer and I thought that it had died. I almost completely gave up on it but I had still been watering it once it got warmer then and I figured it would come back. I've been watering it um, a little bit every couple weeks since the spring and it has finally come back for me and it's beautiful. This is a caladium and the leaves are just so pretty. There's a lot of these but this one is my favorite one that I've ever seen simply because I love the pink and it has so much new growth in there as well. It's just so beautiful. It's been really easy for me to take care of when I first initially got it. I've had it in different places around my house. Right now it's living in a western window. It spent most of its time a little farther away from an eastern window its first year that I had it. And it's done fine in both places in a little bit lower light condition and now a much higher light condition. And it's just gorgeous and this time of the year not everything inside is blooming hardly anything is and so having a little bit of color inside is just wonderful and I've loved it so two more plants this is one of my marantas this is my green maranta I have been obsessed with prayer plants I love all of them just I just think that they're all beautiful but I haven't been able to get that many prayer plants so because there's lots of different kinds like in the family of prayer plants technically but all that I have so far is a green maranta and a red maranta. I love my red maranta but I just want to show you my green maranta because it's so full and beautiful and it just treats me so well. It's so easy to propagate. I don't really understand how I propagate it like where I'm supposed to cut it but every once in a while I'll actually break off a piece and I just stick it in water and it comes back and it just grows and gets so many new leaves and creates this big huge plant in my fish tank. So then I pot it up and it does really well in transition to soil as well. And I think that my favorite part about these plants is actually at night when their leaves fold up and I love the texture on the back. I think that the striping on it almost from the veins is just beautiful. And then with the red maranta, there's so many different um, colors on the back. On the backs of these leaves, they're just, they're all so different. I mean, they're not all so crazy different, but they're all different. Like, look how red that one is. Not all of them are that red. It's just interesting, and some of them are patterned with the red. It's just beautiful. I love this plant and I especially love it at night when it folds up and I can see the bottom of the leaves as well as the front of the leaves. During the day it's not necessarily my favorite plant but in the evening and at night it definitely is. It's just so beautiful both of these. I love them. I really love umbrella trees. This one it's a little dusty because it lives 
back in a shadowy kind of darker corner of my living room you really need a good dusting i need to do some plant maintenance actually uh, they're all due for a little bit of maintenance so maybe i'll do that as a video probably not i don't know i don't feel like doing that right now maybe eventually but right now this plant it it has been one of my favorites for a while i've had it for about three ish years it was a gift for us as a housewarming present when we bought this house and it's grown probably two maybe three feet since we've gotten it and it's just beautiful and no matter how much I neglect it it's still happy I I mean you can tell by how dusty this plant is I neglect it a lot I don't actually treat it like it's one of my favorites but it is because it fills in a lot of space and a darker area of my living room that's harder to fill in space with plants if that makes sense so you know it's a plant like this that can do okay in a little bit less light it doesn't get direct light I'm pretty sure that they do just fine in high light since it is a tree trees do great in high light oh I forgot to talk about my rubber tree so I'll talk about my rubber tree next um this plant just does so good I really like it and it's it's actually shooting off a green thing on the bottom of it too so it's getting this huge new shoot, which is interesting. I don't know, I just really like this plant. This one is my rubber tree. It's a basic rubber tree. I have a variegated one, but I haven't had it long enough to really say it's one of my favorites. But this one though, it's so easy to take care of. The, when I first got it, I would water it like once a month. I got it in the fall, and so I didn't want to water it too much. And now I water it every two weeks-ish during the summer, during its growing season, but it grows for me all winter as well. What I really like about it is that when it gets a new leaf, it's like this red color, and I think it's really interesting. It adds some extra interest over in this area because there's so much green, so many plants, that having some extra colors does create some distinction, and I like that a lot. Okay, so those are all my absolute favorite plants. Now onto the honorable mentions, because I mean, partially I just wanted to show you the guppies on this guppy plant. Oh, they're so cute. There's one over here, and then, oh, there's a little baby one right with it. I have been wanting a guppy plant for quite some time, but I didn't want to buy a huge one, because that's all that my local nursery has had was really big ones, and their bigger plants are very expensive. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money on a plant that my cat is loving on my umbrella tree. Oh, no, he loves my plants. He likes to rub all over them, which I think is fine because in nature, plants would be like messed with, like animals would be rubbing against them. And so I think it's probably actually kind of good for them. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I've been wanting a guppy plant for quite some time and they finally had them where they were a little cheaper because they will have little tiny cans of them and this plant was actually pretty big in one of those and so I got one for only like three dollars ish and instead of like 20 <laughs> so I really like it a lot it's been really fun and I don't know let's see if I can keep it alive like I said with my honorable mentions these are mostly plants I haven't had that long but that I really have been liking so I can't say that they're my absolute favorites just because I don't know how easy they are to take care of and how much I will love them over time. <laughs> so one of them is this obtusifolia, Peperomia obtusifolia. I recently got some variegated ones. You can see my uh, that hall up in the corner thingy. This one is just a basic Peperomia obtusifolia and I love the shape of the leaves. It's just beautiful and I like how the stems are a little bit different colors to them. It's just beautiful. And it seems really easy to take care of so far. I've had it for, um, like, I don't know, maybe two months, something like that. I've had this lipstick plant since um, this winter, later in the winter, but I didn't know what this was for a long time. And it was much smaller when I gotten it, but it's grown like crazy and it needs to be dusted a little. Oh no, you're just getting fuzzier. Oh, it's mostly been newer growth. And so my the older growth is getting fuzzy now. 
I was wondering why it wasn't fuzzy at all, because lipstick plants are supposed to be kind of fuzzy, and it hasn't been really fuzzy. So now it's getting fuzzier. This is growing like crazy. That's why I love this plant, because it just grows and grows and grows. I've had, hardly had it very long at all, and it was so little when I got it, and now it's huge. I mean, comparatively, anyways. It hasn't flowered yet, but I still love it for its foliage. It's beautiful. This is a Peperomia Jelly, and I really like this plant because it's colorful and it's been extremely easy to take care of, and yeah, that's why. <laughs> if I ever get to water it, it's fine. It lives in an eastern window, and you know, it's happy. It's, although a little bit extra bright right now, and I think that is just stressing from the heat. I'm not entirely sure, and so it's not on my absolute favorites because it's been doing this, and I'm not entirely sure if that's a good thing or not. I've had this plant for like a year and a half-ish, maybe a little longer. No, yeah, maybe. And it's never been this brilliant, so we shall see. <laughs> my last plant is a, uh, what are you called again? Monstera, duh. This is a Monstera Deliciosa. This one is quite a young one. It only has a little bit of splits on it, but it gets more splits every once in a while. Most of its leaves aren't split, but I actually really like the leaves that aren't split. I'm including this in this video because it's so easy to take care of, and it's really fun to see how it just grows, and I love watching the leaves unfurl. This one's getting ready to unfurl, and it doesn't have any splits in it though. But yeah, it's just really interesting seeing how it's developing and how fast it grows. If I put it in more sunlight, where I got a little bit more brighter light, it would probably get split sooner. But, you know, I'm not bothered by it not having that many splits. It's just kind of a fun plant. And I need to start taking cuttings from it soon. But it's, it's a good, reliable plant. Another thing that I really like about this plant, why this is in my honorable mentions, is because, like right now, it's facing towards you. That's because I've had it facing towards the window this way, and I need to turn it, but by tomorrow, it will be facing all different directions. So I like this plant because it moves easily with how I turn it, and it won't get stagnantly growing in one crazy way. It was a little difficult to pare down my, like, 200-ish plants down to however many this is, but I did it a little bit, I guess. I don't know. I didn't really mean to pare them down. I just wanted to show you what my favorite ones are. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any experience with these, and if you like them or you don't like any of them, then please let me know. I always find it interesting when people have similar plants to me, but they have completely different experiences with them. Because I have that same thing with other people that they say that a plant is super easy to take care of and they love it and then I get it and I've tried it multiple times it's just difficult for me so um yeah please let me know and if you have any other comments or questions or whatever then please don't hesitate to put them in the comment section below I love talking with you guys so yeah oh also thank you for a thousand subscribers I've been working on this for a while and now that I have over a thousand I'm just like absolutely thrilled this is so much fun <laughs> so welcome to all my new subscribers I've gotten so many of you recently so I hope you like this video and I make videos on natural living house plants and house DIYs and sometimes other random things but generally mostly house plants I usually do a house plant video every week and then sometimes I throw in some extra ones so I hope you have a really great day and I will talk to you later bye